Well, hello, everyone. You are in for a treat today. We have Tracy Moeller, and she is from the Moeller Group in Colorado. And so today our title is Breaking Into the Luxury Market and what are your top objections and how to handle them for sellers and buyers. So Tracy, welcome. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for including me today. I'll do my best for you here. Great. Well, let's dive right in and you are just crushing it in the luxury market. And so I want you to kind of think through, um, you know, what are some of the things that you did to get into the luxury market? And if someone wasn't in the luxury market now and they want to break into that, what are some specific tips that they could do? Well, I think uh, number one is have patience. <laughs> I know it's super hard when you're an agent. Um, I've been in sales a long time. Specifically where I live, there was like three or four heavy hitters that had, you know, 20 years on me, right? So they had that uh, lots of experience and a lot of history. Um, I didn't focus on what everyone else was doing. I, I just worked really, really hard. So I would say that don't, don't focus on what everyone else's numbers. Just worry about where you are. And any of the listings that you do get that are maybe non-luxury, just work really, really hard to present them the best, win the beauty contest, get more money for your seller, and you know, be a good person, be a good person in your community. Um, some of my luxury listings have come from people that I did not know had luxury listings. Um, so, so, so just be good to your, you know, your, your sphere, your butcher, your banker, your dry cleaners. Um, my, my first luxury listing, someone just asked me recently, I teach a lot of uh, classes at Keller Williams. How did I know that I made it? And it was about four years ago when I got a phone call from a girl and I knew her voice. And she said, do you remember me? I, my name is Stephanie. And I used to work at the UPS store in Evergreen, Colorado. And I said, oh my God, I do remember you. She ended up having an 8,600 square foot home on the 15th hole of the golf course in Evergreen, Colorado. I had no idea that someone that worked part-time at the UPS store would, you know, we, we, we have these presumptions about people. We assume that someone that works at the UPS store would not have a, you know, $2.5 million listing. That was my first listing. And you know why I got it? I went up against five other agents. It's because it's mindset. You got to go in there. Like I've worked really hard. I'm a good person. I know the area and I'm going to do my very best for someone. That's all they want. So I went in there with contribution. I did my homework. I only had two days to prepare, which was very scary. And um, so I, I was well prepared and I just looked them in the eye and said, I will do my very best for you. So um, you just have to be patient. And then I would also volunteer. OK, I would volunteer at like, you know, uh, the Echo, which is a um, a nonprofit here in Evergreen. I do a lot of uh, philanthropy. I donate at the Sacred Heart Home, which is a shelter. There's a lot of high uh, affluence um, going there with people donating. So. Um, it's patience. You just, you just got to pave your way. It, it takes a couple of years. I've just started my eighth year and now I'm really primarily do, only doing luxury, uh, but I'll help anyone. So again, um, I, I treat all my listings like luxury. I think it's the experience that it's not just a price point. It's the experience that people have that that's important that they remember. Remember that it's not, yeah. They, so of course they, they remember how much they got for their house. Don't get me wrong but they really remember how you treated them. And I think at the end of the day, that's what separates people that are really successful is, is, is the experience that you allowed them to have with you. So I am very high maintenance myself and I love to like, for example, I, I have a luxury listing. I'm not selling my house right now, but I do. And so I would be a luxury client that someone would work with. And for me, I would say I'd want someone who they were an agent that elevated every aspect of their service to me. And so, for example, I love if I'm going to go stay at a hotel, my first choice is always the Four Seasons and my second choice is the Ritz-Carlton. And then my third choice would probably be a JW Marriott. And then everything else from there to me would be like camping because I am so big on service. So I want you to kind of talk about the level of service that you sure. give, because if you want to be a luxury agent, 
bottom line to me, number one is that means that the level of service that you give to your clients has to be second to none. Otherwise, just if you aren't that over the top, just get, don't even think about going into the luxury market, in my opinion. So give us some tips of some of the like extra things that you do okay, sure. for service. Well, here's an example. Okay. I don't care what your price point is. Moving is difficult and it's really stressful. I don't care how much money you have in the bank and how big your house is, right? It promotes this uncertainty. It promotes anxiety. I had a luxury listing recently where she was the CFO of um, National Geographic, okay? She had worked there for like 28 years. She had a mountain home. It was luxury. Well, she had enough books to fill up a library, okay? And like plants, and even though the house was beautiful and had views and all those things, I have a team that actually comes in there and gets rid of all of that, right? So it completely, you know, really helped her with her anxiety level that I had a team that would come in and pack those books up, donate them, get rid of the plants, drop them off places. So, um, and, or if I live in the mountains of Colorado, I have a luxury listing coming up that's in the foothills. It takes a little bit to get back there for the views. And I have, you know, called my snow service guy. Like I've already taken that up. I've taken that element of anxiety. So I take all the anxiety away from the client. So whatever that would be, everyone's, everyone's different of what they're, you know, of, of, of what, what's going to make them nervous in the transaction. So it's, it's from, you know, transactions end, right? Um, relationships don't. So it just depends on, you know, just remember that and people know that. So, um, and, and I actually do two videos, right? I do like one video where I, which is an old time photographer who is the best in Colorado and uh, his, his MLS pictures are the very best. And I picked the music. And then I have another younger photographer that, that, who's in his 30s that's very, you know, digital. And he does a cinematic. So I do both of those so that the, the seller can look at both of those because we're gearing to two different spheres sometimes. Um, and, you know, basically, I, 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 I make sure that the house is presented impeccable. And I mean impeccable. I look at luxury listings. I just looked at one today. It looked like the agent was never there. The master pillows were not even straight. So, um, you know, I'm always there for every photo shoot. It's not my assistant. And I just make sure everything looks perfect and that it's presented. And I don't rush a listing. Okay. I never, it's kind of like the bank, right? When you need a loan at the bank and you go in, they're not going to give it to you. They're going to give you the loan when you don't need it. And that's how a luxury listing is. So don't ever go in like you really need it. So one of the things when I go to the Four Seasons that I love is one, they have like daily, tw twice a day, they have housekeeping services in the morning. Then they do turn down service with mm -hmm. little chocolates. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. if, if I bring my pet, they have pet amenities. My kids, when they come, they give them a little gift to, to my son. Um, you know, there's just so many little extras yeah. that they do. Right to make me feel special and make me feel like, like I'm really on vacation and I don't have to worry about anything. I mean, my every little need is met. So talk about some things that you do, even like when you would, when you go to the listing presentation, sure. are you bringing anything with you? And what are some of these extra little amenities sure. that are well, kind chocolates. of now? Okay. Always, always bring something. Okay. Bring something that that's going to last for a couple of days. Um, I don't suggest a candle because that, you know, everyone's kind of scent and alcohol. I don't believe in bringing alcohol. People that are selling luxury listings have their own uh, repertoire for wine, fine wine. So, um, you know, I have a state, I have a, a couple things. I have a, a full staging team that comes in and Hey, look at, I've gone to a lot of luxury listings. I have to be careful where the furniture is not the furniture that I want to photograph. Okay. So number one, I bring honesty and I bring a full staging team, a videographer, a photographer. I have a full time cleaning service company that does an, a move in and move out that's included in my fees. And I am bringing um, an interior designer from the Bay Area that says 10 years of luxury hospitality. So we have a combination of things that we bring and there's no fee to the client. It's kind of included in my package. So it's included in my commissions. Mm. So let's talk about 
as far as things that you do to market the home? You talked about the videos that you did, but what are some other things that you kind of, if you're going to talk about the, the luxury, if you're at the appointment, what are you saying that you're going to do differently as a luxury agent to market their home? Because that's what they want to hear. Well, I put them in one of the finest magazines in the foothills, which is Serenity, which is very expensive. I do a full, I have a full page. If you remember what the uh, the old Life magazine looks like, it's large in size. So I engage in that every month. I have the back cover of another publication. I am pretty big on print. Uh, that may be taboo for a lot of you younger agents, but my clients are not on social media. If they are, they're looking at their grandchildren. So um, I also put an ad in the Wall Street Journal, and they're of course on you know 650 eight websites with Keller Williams. So um, that's basically what I do. I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I, I do mailings as well, you know, just listed to um, all the zip codes in the foothills. So if I list a mid-century, I kind of send it to all those people. So basically I'm a, I do a lot of print. So someone breaking into the luxury market, they want to kind of establish relationships with wealthier people and so maybe is there anything that you've done as far as like talking to your CPA or talking to your attorney or building relationships with people who have a higher net worth that might be able to introduce you to someone in a more of a luxury market? What are some tips in that area if they wanted to break in? Oh, I kind of just lost you. It just said it was recording. You know, it's my sphere already. You know, I don't want to be pompous about that. I have very wealthy family in Chicago, two brothers um, that I do. Ref I do referrals a lot from Chicago, right? So um, either my family's been in the law business for 98 years. So I have a lot of connections there. I said, most of my business is referral based. Um, but I, you know, I don't falsely join groups to get business. I guess you're asking me, I don't really you know, my sphere is luxury. I live in a luxury home. I live in a luxury neighborhood for the last 25 years. And it's been very difficult for me to, you know, I'm a family woman. I raise my children here and I don't want to be discouraging, but it's, again, it just takes time. It, it, you, you have to have production to get production. That's, that's basically, um, but I'm not, I'm not joining, you know, you know, the opera and, and, you know, misrepresenting myself. Um, so, so I guess I'm not your candidate that's, you know, joining high net group people. All right, let's shift gears a little bit about objections. So one of the things that you are really good at is handling top objections for sellers and buyers. So I'm going to be the seller or buyer. We'll start with sellers and we'll just go that route. So sure. if I said to you, you know, we're sitting down, I want to know why should I hire you? Because I'm going to get your deal closed. So I'm how do how are I'm you convinced maker. that you're 90, going to do that? I, I've sold uh, since 2021. I've sold 87 million dollars worth of real estate, and out of those 87 million, I've had three price reductions out of 58 listings. And you know, I I, I know how to get a deal closed. Uh, anyone can put a house on the market. It's keeping all of those components the inspection, the appraiser. Um, and I have a niche for making people feel good from the beginning to the end. And that's what it's going to take. Um, you know, people, I don't care what the price point is, but it's certainly a luxury. I've had, I, I just had a $3 million deal where I represented both the buyer and the seller and the deal was going to fold because they had 87 pieces of very expensive furniture that was included in a cash sale and a $3,000 table and table got uh, not on the addendum. And so the deal almost, you know, crashed. Uh, so I kept that together. So when people stop feeling good, I don't care if it's luxury or not luxury, they don't close the deal. So I have a very, very high track record of keeping the deal together. And that, that's what it's going to take. And, you know, your goal is to get it closed, not just to have beautiful pictures out there. I want to tell you one of the reasons why I joined and I just love Cancel is that I can get 100% commission, I get revenue share, and I get stock. 
I am making thousands of dollars every single month in revenue share in stocks. And I now don't have to work nights and weekends on real estate anymore. You know, I've actually never been to a real estate agent's retirement party. And I want to be the first one that people are coming to at a young age. And I want to share with you some of my favorite resources. So if you go to joincanzel.com slash free, there's a couple that I want you to download. One is a 20 free lead generating PDF. It's gonna help you generate leads for free that you can download, as well as there's one on how to double your business. I don't want you to miss it. Go download it today. Joincanzel.com slash free. So I feel like the interest rates are too high right now. I don't feel like this is the time to put my house on the market. Well, you know what? I bought at 13%, so I totally understand you where you're coming from exactly uh were there more buyers when it was 2.5 in every city absolutely okay it was like a frenzy we had seven to ten to fifteen offers on luxury homes in, in the foothills of colorado we don't need 10 15 to 17 offers we need one to three okay and what i'm seeing i've got a formula here that shows that 75 percent of my luxury listings in the last 12 months interest rate high or not we're mostly cash. Hmm. Should I list now or wait until the weather is better? Well, let's talk about your intentions for, for moving. Um, do you have a place to go? What are your intentions? Um, I would say to you this, I would put your house on the market today. We don't know what's going to happen in the spring. Colorado gets snow all the way through July. So let's, let's get your house ready and put it on the market. I don't, I don't, I, you know, get your money out now. Why wait? I cannot guarantee and tell you or predict what the market's going to be in 30 days, much less six months. My house isn't ready to list. I just have too many things that I need to do to get it ready. I totally understand that can be very overwhelming. My team comes in, we can help you pack up things and donate it to Habitat for Humanity. I have a full-time cleaning crew. I have painters and contractors at my fingertips. Let me know how I can help you. So tell me as far as if I haven't found a place to go, my biggest objection right now is that I might sell this, but what if you can't find me what I'm looking for? Exactly, that's where my negotiation skills come in at the best is that I have been able to get a post occupancy for many of my clients, 45 to 60 days, making it a no rush. I never rush a deal, never rush a deal. So, you know, we can start looking and just because you list your house, people doesn't mean you need to sell it. So there's too much uncertainty right now with bank failures, the economy, the stock market is really volatile. And I just feel like I should just wait. I don't think this is a right time for to buy or sell right now. I'm ready when you're ready. You can't okay. change someone. You can't change someone's insecurities. I mean, you know, it, you know, you want to sit or sell. And I think, again, it gets back to the beginning of our conversation was what, what's the intention here? My sellers in luxury right now, are they moving out of Colorado to go see grandchildren, right? And are they want to get their money out and go get something that's less maintenance and less money? So I, I think it, it gets back to what the intentions of the, of the person is. Uh, gone are the days that like you can sell a $800,000 for 1.3 just because someone wants to live in Colorado. That's, that's two years ago. That's not what's happening now. Yeah. One thing I want to say about if someone says I would sell, but where do I go? I only want to sell if I can find something to buy of where I want to be. And what I would say to that is, you know, it's always good to have a plan and it's my job as your agent to help you come up with that right. plan. Um, but I also can make it where we can negotiate with a buyer, such as making an offer contingent upon you finding a Correct. replacement property or putting a lease back option in place for exactly. an agreed upon period of time to make that transition work. And if you don't find something, then you don't have to sell. You can stay right here. That to me makes them feel like, all right, well, yeah. Yes, we yeah. can get an offer if I'm happy, but listen, if you don't find something that you love, don't worry, I'm going to put a contingency in there so you don't have to go anywhere. That to me is the best objection yeah. for that. What do you think about that? 
I love that. And by the way, I'm connected to thousands of agents all over the country. You're not alone here. You know, we can, you know, I, I, I think, I think that's a big deal right now that people, you know, are moving and are like, oh my God, I can't find something that I'm going to really like. And Hey, I don't, I don't want people mad at me. Right? <laughs> my idea is to have happy people, everyone. If I, if I forget to say happy, 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 um, you know, happy, happy, happy. Actually, I just saw that movie from um, Duck Dynasty, the one they yeah. put out this weekend. It was really good. If you guys didn't get a chance to see it, you should go see it. It's called The Blind. Yeah. And, and get reviews every, you know, get, you know, connect with people on your reviews. My reviews are amazing. And at first I was shy about asking for them. Um, you know, like, oh, God, am I going to be bothering them? No, you just sold their home. Get a review. And at the end of the day, all you can do is your very best. And and um, yeah, so so the idea is, is if people don't trust you and like you, they're not going to do business with you. So just be honest. Just be honest. All right. What about I want to sell, but I don't want to go on the MLS. I don't want photos or open houses or other marketing. Can you just put the word out to other agents and let people know about it? That's the route I'd like to go at first. Absolutely. I can do that immediately. In fact, I have three homes that are luxury right now that like their kids aren't graduating till May. Um, then, you know, another agent found out about it just recently and it's like vultures already. Um, absolutely. We can do that. Let's get photography done now. I can share it with my office. Colorado is a little, little strict about compliance. So you have to do an in-office exclusive. It's got to be fair game to all. I explain all those rules. But I always bring up, let's remember, I may, and I, I do have buyers out there, so let's show them to my buyers so we can kind of gauge price. It can't hurt you at all, but let's remember, sometimes you get more money when you go on the market, right? Yeah. So you know, I always try to do those proactive tidbits that, you know, sometimes that we forget because we're excited about the listing. But remember, when you, you know, I always feel like I have to bring that up, like, let you know, let's get a bid war because where I live, there's still two to three buyers for any home that wins the beauty contest. Right. So um, that's kind of, and I love that you said that. I love that you, you started out by saying, cause again, with luxury or with anyone, they want to feel like they were heard. So I would start exactly how you said, which I would yeah. say, absolutely. I can do that, but I would like to discuss why you feel that way. And I understand your concerns about exposure and yeah. privacy, but the reality is, is that properties have the best chance of selling when they've been able to have the most exposure, which is doing the, the marketing yeah. that I do and putting it on the MLS. And the goal is to create a sense of urgency because urgency leads to action. And so when the property is not publicly on the market, right. people may appear interested, but then they just take their time and yeah. it's not out there for all to see. So while I can do that, I yeah. don't feel like that is in your best interest. And my goal for you is to get the best price and the best terms for you with the yeah. fastest process. So I understand right. your privacy concerns, but what's yeah. more important, me getting you top dollar and faster, I'm sure is probably your best, con you know, best thing yeah. that you're looking for. Absolutely. Anymore. Yeah. And validating those. And I'm, you know, we, we're hearing the interest rates, right? Especially when you're dealing with luxury people, you see all these agents putting on like what the interest rate is what's going on you know a lot of people that are selling luxury they have financial advisors they're very well aware of the interest rates and what's happening in the stock market so don't 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 try to educate them and or minimize the fact that you know yeah when you bought a three million dollar house two years ago at 2.5 it was a very different monthly payment than it is today so again just you know um validate their concerns and be honest with them. What about, I don't want a lockbox on the property. Mm, well, don't worry about that. I've got three people that work for me that can show the house without, you know, meet, meet those agents and get them in. There's a lot of luxury people. Uh, and I understand your concern. Um, um, I will, I will handle that. I, I, for me, um, that this is how I would say it because I would always want to have a lockbox on the property, but I would say, yeah. you know, go ahead. There's a lot of people that don't want a lockbox on their property. 
Yeah. That yeah. I, so, yeah. yeah. And, and I understand that. And what I would say, I would really put like, I think what happens is most people are like, I don't want a lockbox and they go, okay, no problem. And then yeah. they just do that. Yeah. But for me, I would really try to handle that objection and I would try to do it several times. And what I would say is that, you know, I understand what your concerns of not having a lockbox on, but I believe that a lockbox is the best way to go. And let me just explain a couple reasons why. Um, agents and buyers don't like to spend time trying to see homes that aren't easily accessible. And although I have a team of people that can help me with the showings, you know, you having a lockbox and we don't have to put the lockbox. If you're not comfortable with the lockbox being on the front door, then we can put it on the side of the house. There's other right. places that we can do, but we don't want to make it where I or my team, there are times where let's say you're out of town for a week, it's available to show. And I, someone wants to see it at 8 a.m. on a on a Friday and I'm not able to do it right at that time, we want to make it as convenient as possible. In addition, here's all the reasons why, you know, we're vetting these people. We're making sure that this person is someone who has, you know, your home is $2 million. I'm making sure that they have a pre-approval letter. And I would start listing all those reasons of why they absolutely should have a lockbox and how that is truly what is the best for them because a showing appointment will, you know, first of all, I'll make sure it's confirmed. I'll make sure who the buyers are. I'm making sure I'm working with agents who are high end that so far I've never, ever had a problem with anything being stolen. And so I just kind of really keep pushing back on that because I do think it's the best. Well, I've had people object, you know, that they have children. Okay. They don't want a lockbox on if they have children. So, you know, um, I, I've yet to have a problem, you know, with anyone with a lockbox situation. It, it doesn't really come up very often. Open houses. Yes. Um, but I, you know, the, the reason why I get through the open house objection is like, Hey, look at, there's a lot of people that don't want to call their agent that like, Oh my God, that house came on the market where maybe weren't intentionally looking, but a gorgeous, sexy home came on the market and they want to go look at it. You can't sell a house if someone doesn't see it. So at least I don't take a sight unseen. Um, I mean, there's a lot of offers that come in that way, but I'm just saying, so yeah, you, you, you can kind of, you, you, it just depends on the person, right? Depends how yeah. adamant they are. Well, we are out of time, but I want you to handle yeah. one last objection before we do. And that is, I only want to go to the listing agent for properties I'm interested in buying. How would you handle that? You're, you're talking about uh, for a buyer objection? A buyer objection, yeah. They say, I only want to go to the listing agent for the property. I don't want to go to the use another agent. You're talking about if I wanted to represent a buyer, I'm trying to get a buyer's a buyer luxury agreement? Yes. How, how sure are you that they're going to be able to take care of you like I am? I mean, you don't even know who these, you don't, you don't know who the agents are, their background, their history. I know the area. And actually I am a heavy lister in the area. Why would you not want to work with me? I, I've got the most listings in the whole area of Colorado. Mm, yeah. Contrib- con- contribution. Yeah. And if you didn't have listings, I would say something along the lines of, you know, as a seller's agent, they are hired yeah. by the seller to represent their interest, obtain right. their highest price and their right. best terms. That's what they are, are wanting to do. Yeah. When a buyer wants to work through the listing agent, it puts yeah. the agent in a precarious professional position, first of all. And I want to make sure I'm representing you to get you the best price. Yeah. And so I really feel like that would be a bad idea for you to be working. It'd be like an, an attorney working for both sides. It just is not a great thing. Yeah, well, we are full, yeah go ahead. I said dual representation. I do a lot. It is difficult, right? And yes. I never do it with someone that I've worked with in the past, right? It's hard to, you've already become friends with them. So um, right. 
Thanks for having me on today. Well, thank you so much for being on with us. Your wisdom and all of the things that you've learned in your experience. It's been a pleasure having you. Tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. Yes, I'm Tracy Muller. I'm with Kelly Williams Foothills Luxury Realty in Evergreen, Colorado. I am the owner and head agent of the Moeller Group, and that's spelled the Moeller, M-O-L-L-E-U-R group.com. Follow me. And if you have anyone in Colorado, I would love to connect with you. Uh, my email is Tracy, T-R-A-C-Y at M-O-L-L-E-U-R.com. I am all about karma and sharing, and I'd help anyone if you if you need it. So just reach out anytime. Awesome. Well, Tracy, thank you so much for being with us and you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up shortly. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, leave a rating and a review so we can get this out to more agents and tune in next week for another power pack episode. This is the millionaire real estate podcast.